How many of you have been told, this is the Credit River case with Judge Mahoney. How many of you have been told that the Credit River case has no bearing, that it's not a precedent-setting case? I have. Oh, I have too, sir. Oh, yeah I, I, yeah, I can tell you I have. Yeah, I have. They, they say that it's them, them, them sovereign citizens who bring up Credit River. Well, yeah, yeah. Hold on, guys. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and prove to you that the Credit River case is, pay attention, precedent setting. Guaranteed, I can prove this. And there's not a lawyer or a judge on this planet who can disprove me or prove me wrong. Now, we're going to cover two things. The first thing, I'm working on the subpoenas. It has nothing to do with the Credit River case, but I decided to pull up this statement from the Credit River case. The plaintiff, Montgomery, the, um, I mean, Morgan, sorry, the, the president of the bank was Morgan. He admitted that it, his bank, in combination with the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, which are for all practical purposes because of their interlocking activities and practices, and both being banking institutions incorporated in the laws of the United States, are in the law to be treated as one and the same bank. And they did create entirely the $14,000 in money or credit upon their own books by bookkeeping entry. And that this was in consideration uh, that this was the consideration you support the note dated blah, 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 blah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, don't quote Credit River. Quote the judge giving facts. Quote this guy who was under cross-examination. You guys must understand, this is expert testimony that you get to use in your cases because it was an expert witness. Now, let's prove that the Credit River case was a precedent setting case not just in minnesota because it was a national case because it involved national banks of the united states this wasn't a local case he was representing the federal reserve bank of minneapolis and they were operating as their institutions are incorporated under the laws of the united states so their practice is a national practice Hold on now, we ain't just stopping there. This was a trial before juries. Now, do you guys know about this? Hold on. Well, let's do this. Wake up. Wake up. The Seventh Amendment to the United States Constitution. Stop listening. Now, we don't care about no $20 thing. Uh-uh. We don't care about no right to no jury trial. That's not the Seventh Amendment. Seventh Amendment don't say nothing about no jury trial. Let's find out what the Seventh Amendment says. We're going to go to Constitution at Congress.gov. G-O-V. supposed to be an official site. I don't think it's official, but they say it's official. So where's the amendment? Look at that. Oh, there the amendment right there. Let's read the amendment, okay? And so it's a common law. So there is a common law suit, oh, pay attention, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20. The right to a trial by jury shall be preserved and no fact tried by a jury. See, the jury gets to determine law and fact. Shall be otherwise reexamined by any court of the United States. That includes the Minnesota Supreme Court and Missouri Supreme Court and United States Supreme Court and California Supreme Court or the district court or any court because it says any court of the United States. Then according to the rules of common law, guess what? Rules of common law don't let them overturn the jury verdict. You see, nobody paid attention. The Supreme Court of that state didn't overturn the jury verdict. He overturned the judge's decree but you can't overturn the jury verdict the jury verdict is final sorry ladies and gentlemen that's how they went after so many people of color what y'all didn't know that's how they were putting so many of people of color on ropes and hanging them or putting them in jail for life 
because they were accusing them without proper witnesses and juries were finding them guilty. Hey, I got something I want to show y'all. I promise y'all, y'all's going to dig this. Give me one second. Now, I apologize, y'all. I don't know who sent this, uh, who put this video out on TikTok. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. While it's playing, I'm going to get the person's name because I got to give people their credit. I can't take credit for somebody else's stuff. Somebody put this on TikTok. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Hilarious! Give me one second. But factual. It's only three minutes. Hold on now. <clears throat> Okay, so we're talking about money today, right? And why people need I money or the city need and money and, and stuff like Same. that, right? So, seeing as how City Hall and the city is having a hard time wrapping their head and their brain around the fact that black people, communities need our money, I decided today that maybe I would bring a visual aid to help you all understand that we deserve our money. Now, for all the white people, Hispanic people, what's that kind Hold on, no, hold on now. Y'all may not understand what she's trying to say. You see, I've grown up listening to people acting like they've been disenfranchised too, that they've been treated wrong and badly too. What she's trying to say is, hold on, y'all. We ain't talking about y'all. I wasn't talking to you. This ain't about you. So just understand. That's why he says she's talking to all the white people, Hispanic people, and she could even say Asian people. She's being very specific. And I agree with her. Sorry, some people are going to get offended. But I agree with her. Now, you're going to see why I agree with her. Because pay attention. This ain't never happened to any other group of people. Pay attention to what she's about to say. Young lady, I'm going to go back a little bit because I want you, because, you know, somebody was talking in the background and I, I, that wasn't supposed to be intentional. So one second. Communities need our money. I decided today that maybe I would bring a visual aid to help you all understand that we deserve our money. Now, for all the white people, Hispanic people, what's that, Conway, Conley? Uh-huh, who's probably rich, all the men, Conley, who's probably rich because of things like this. Let me help you out with the sign, what this says, okay? It says, Negroes for sale by public auction on Thursday at 10 a.m., the 12th of April, 1848. Prime and healthy at O'Donnell's Auction House. Second Cucumber Land Street, Charleston, South Carolina. We're looking for 25 field hands, trained at hauling, chopping, thrashing, bailing, plowing, peaceful, no troublemakers, strong, can work in the heat all day long, 10 boys being taught to drive wagons and fetch, quick learners, 18 women, eight with future insurance, all house trained, clean, cooking, iron, making beds, six girls, comely, quiet, budding out, and headstrong, manageable, one female, superior cook, an excellent seamstress, also for sale at one o'clock, plow horses, cows, hogs, one prime bull. Hold on now. Cows? Horses, bulls, that's what they compared people of color to. Yeah, they held auctions to sell them. So when you are complaining about being disenfranchised or you're complaining that you don't agree with affirmative action and for the Supreme Court, you group of idiots, when you tell people that they have to prove that the companies have disenfranchised them, no, don't sue the companies, sue the United States for endorsing that sue your state for endorsing that for allowing the sale of people which kept your family disenfranchised up to the present day do your genealogy show that your people were sold and go after the state this woman doesn't know what she did but she knew what she was doing and then she talks about how they traded them as if they were livestock 
Now, hold on. Let me prove to you that the people who did this knew what they were doing. We got to go back to about here. One second. This is only my fourth time listening to this, y'all. And every time I listen to it, I pick up on Mo. Hold on now. And headstrong, manageable, one female, superior cook, an excellent seamstress, also for sale at one o'clock. Okay, also for sale. Pay attention. Also for sale. That means they're included. Also, they knew what they were doing. They weren't just selling slaves, they were selling people. Now, you guys got to understand, we're not talking about the so-called 13th Amendment. We're talking about the Northwest Ordinance. That's where the 13th Amendment comes from. There was not supposed to be slavery in the United States from the very beginning. No involuntary servitude. What they claimed is that since these individuals came from other countries, then they were not entitled to be treated as people. They were property because they were property when they came from these other countries who recognized them as property. That's the technicality that they relied upon. But hold on now. Half of the people who were in the United States at that time were foreigners. Half of them were foreigners. It had nothing to do with property issue. But so that you know, people are property. They were sold as property. That's what she's doing. We're going to let her finish, okay? Plow horses, cows, hogs, one prime bull, fed five heads of goats and two wagons. That was in 1848. Then, she didn't even finish. Up, 81 years later, here's the Jim Crow sign while we were working in America mm -hmm. and paying taxes. We couldn't even go do the same bathroom. Look at Fast Squares. Look at Riley. See, they ain't bothered by because they See, she's talking about the so-called members of that so-called commission that's there. Look at them. They ain't bothered by this because they already got rich because of this is what she's saying. Jim Crow signs. Page anyway. That's 81 years in 1929. Then fast forward all the way to 1964 when we finally came out of Jim Crow. Then let's fast forward 20 years after that, where they put induced our communities with crack and the AIDS epidemic. And you still want to find money for everybody but us? Y'all are disgrace. You want to keep spots by and crime silent in your neighborhood while you sit here and try to act like your neighborhood is all good and put crime on black neighborhoods. Y'all need to get right. Now, look, usually you only get two minutes. She's been talking for three minutes, and they, they gave her three minutes. They buzzed her at three minutes, exactly three minutes. But look who's going to come and take the mic. She's finished. She, she didn't already did what she needed to do. She did the damage she needed to do. She embarrassed them. But hold on. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. I, I hold on now. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. So hold on. Oh, look at him. He's over there taking pictures and everything. Y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know. And all those people out there who don't understand, it's not about race. It is about skin color because this country judges a person by the color of their skin. That's why that idiot, I mean, Martin Luther King said that he dreamed of a day where individuals wouldn't be judged by the color of their skin. In America, individuals are judged by the color of their skin. If you don't believe me, go and look at the disproportionate numbers of individuals who are incarcerated. And look at the 64 percentile or more of individuals of color being incarcerated. Look at the fact that Clinton admitted that they went after people of color. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. This is not about color. None of my stuff is about color. I could care less about color, care less about race. But when I see stuff like this, I understand what happened. I know what happened, but there are a lot of people out there trying to say it never happened, or a lot of people out there saying that we're trying to make people feel shame. Why not? You make everyone else feel shame. Let somebody go out there and make a mistake and see if you don't hold it against them for the rest of their lives. Go ahead. Go ahead. I dare you. Now, should 
individuals be forgiven, of course they're forgiven. They're dead. Everybody who participated in slavery are all dead. They're gone. Dead. But not all of the people who participated in Jim Crow, not all of the people who enacted those laws to incarcerate individuals of color. Remember, the president of the United States admitted this is what they were doing. So how come those individuals have not gotten a new trial? How come they've not been released? How come there have been no lawsuits filed? How come there's been no reparations? Oh, and then when people of color ask for reparations, they've reparated every other group. Go ahead. Every other group they've disenfranchised has received reparations. Now, uh, hold on, you, you Hispanic individuals, you Mexican-Americans, please understand the Hidalgo Treaty was your reparations. You have no idea the amount of power and pull Mexico has under the Hidalgo Treaty. Mexico still owns land in the United States as a result, as a result, as a result of the Hidalgo Treaty. You guys just don't understand the treaty. And if you don't believe me, look at all of these people. I, I didn't fully understand it until I moved here to California. You know, most of the land in California, especially going up towards the north, is owned by individuals who are part of the Hidalgo Treaty. Shh, don't tell nobody. All of those farms, all of those so-called wineries, those are generational. Those families own that land generationally. Why do you think California has run the way it's run? Everybody keeps thinking it's the white man. No, it is not. Y'all really need to do your research. Hey, the Hidalgo Treaty ain't no joke. Okay, the Hidalgo Treaty ain't no joke. If you live in any of those states that are a part of the Hidalgo Treaty, you need to do some research because I promise you, I know a guy right now, he's living on land right in the middle of the city. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's hilarious to me because he did his research. And he, he is somebody I met. Somebody introduced me to this man. Not only is he living on as many acres as he wants. <laughs> sorry, it's funny because he contacted Mexico. And they charge him one dollar per year to utilize the land. One dollar per year. It is non-taxable. The United States cannot tax him, nor can they regulate his land as to what he can have and what he can't have. You follow me? They have no jurisdiction. Ta-da! I know you learn something new every day, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I's got to go. I's got to go. Oh, I couldn't find the video, uh, the person who put the video up, and because I was on, uh-oh, let's see, no, I don't want to continue with TikTok, let's escape, I don't want to continue with TikTok, I want to see, oh, there it is, more, uh, what did it say, AL News, so more AL News, okay, more real news. Oh, more real. M-O-O-R-E is more, the last name, but they're saying more real news. More real news. This is Miss Jackson. Sorry, Miss Jackson, but I'm for real. No, seriously, I'm for real. Miss Jackson, that's Miss Jackson talking right there. You know, if, if you're nasty, okay? Sorry, Janet. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this young lady... I don't want TikTok. I don't want to log in. Why you keep asking me to log in? Continue without log in? You better believe I'm going to continue. Hold on, Miss Jackson. We ain't going to play you again. I just want you guys to understand that I try my best to give people the credit for when people do things that deserve credit. This young lady deserves credit. Why? Because she sat up there and told the truth. Now, you know they're going to ignore her because that's what people do. They're going to ignore her and pretend like what she said had no bearing. You all, don't ignore her. Understand that these things happened. Understand that this was an acceptable thing in this country to sell people, to have auctions. And then don't they, nobody even talks about the hanging parties where everybody would get together and enjoy themselves while somebody was being hung. This is this country, but we all want to talk about all these other countries and their history. Look, they talked about Saddam, and they talked about Afghanistan, they talked about Gaddafi. They always talk about, as a country, 
they always talk about other countries and their history and their civil rights, human rights, and blah, 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 blah. The first thing you hear about is how they treat their so-called citizens, but they never talk about this country and how it treats its people, its civilian population. Stop being hoodwinked and bamboozled by the stupid morons. Understand what's really going on. It's important. Why? Because that's where we is, y'all. That's right, I said y'all. That's where we is. And y'all needs to recognize that's where we is. You feels me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have to go. I have to finish the paperwork, uh, the subpoenas and everything, because that goes out tomorrow. Um, but just want to let y'all know it's being done. All right? Take care of yourselves. We will keep you up to speed. The subpoenas and everything will be put online. I'll do a video showing you what it says. I have to serve them first before I give it to you, but it will be online, and we'll go over it. Because those of you who are part of the lawsuit, hey, if you're part of it, you're a part of it. Now, hold on now. People are going to be asking, <laughs> where do I go? Oh, where do I go? Well, you can go to, <clears throat> excuse me, no, you don't have to go there. I mean, you could go there. Hey, y'all hear that? Hey! That's the ringtone. And I gotta go, okay? Give me one second. Give me one second. I gotta let these people on this video know that I gotta go. So I'll be right with you. Have a good day, everybody.